In this video I will show you how to install Lubuntu on a persistent USB drive. And this will not be a live USB environment meant primarily for testing, this will be a full Linux installation on the USB drive, so that means everything you change inside the operating system will be saved to the drive. First we will install the system and then we will try it out. But before we start, welcome to the channel. Here you can find topics about Linux, Docker, game dev or software development in general, or short, agile dev art. If you like that kind of content, then give a like, subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notified when I release new videos. All the necessary links from this video are down in the description and also down there are the timestamps, so you can skip any part if you want. In previous videos I showed you how to install Ubuntu, Manjaro, Linux Mint, Pop OS, Kali Linux and even a full Windows 11 clone on a persistent USB drive. So if you are interested how to install and run the full Windows 11 clone on a persistent USB drive, then you can check out the link to the video up there or down in the description. Lubuntu, the LXQT desktop flavor of Ubuntu that brings old machines back to life because it's so lightweight. So it actually makes sense to install this one on a USB drive. So let's see how this works. First we need to download the ISO. So select get Lubuntu. And for this video we will go with the version 22.10, the Kinetic Kudu. So let's download that one and wait for the download. And here is the ISO. Now this is the ISO with the live environment and first we need to flash this one on a second USB drive. So yes, we will need two USB drives. The first one will be the live environment, this ISO right here. And it can be any off the shelf stick, it doesn't matter, but this is not the final installation. Then we will boot into this live environment on the first USB drive and install the full Lubuntu on a second USB drive. And this second USB drive will then have the final installation on it. Also this second USB drive should be a more faster one, it should have a decent read-write speed, otherwise the whole system will be very slow and it doesn't matter if you use it on a new machine if the USB drive with the OS is the bottleneck. So get a decent USB drive. So with that said, let's flash this one on the first USB drive and therefore we will use a tool called Rufus. This is Rufus, the official website and I use this one in every Linux installation video so far, so if you're following me then you already know how this one works. So let's download this one, click on the link, download complete, let's open it. This is it. Now let's plug in the first USB drive for the live environment and I will do this as well. It has detected my USB drive. Now let's select the ISO, here it is, open. I will leave everything else on default and start. ISO image mode is ok. Now it warns us that everything that is currently on the USB drive will be deleted. So if you have anything important on there, make a backup first. I don't have anything important on there, so I will just continue. And let's wait. Done. The USB drive is ready. So again, this is the USB drive with the live environment and now we need to boot into it. I will assume that you already know how to boot from a USB drive. First you plug in the USB drive, then you restart the system and then while it's restarting you press one of the function keys. It's usually F11 or F12, it depends on your PC manufacturer. And then you will get the boot menu and then inside the menu find your USB drive, select it and it should boot into it. I will do the same on my machine as well and I'll see you in the live environment. Here we are in the Lubuntu live environment. Again this is not the full installation, just a live environment, so everything you do here will be reset to defaults when you boot in again. And now we need to install this one on a second USB drive. And this will then be the full installation. So plug in the second USB drive, I will do it as well. And now let's start the installer. Now I will just go with the defaults, American English is ok, next, location is ok, keyboard as well. And now under storage device you need to select the USB drive that we just plugged in, click on the drop down, in my case it's this one. Now select manual partitioning and next. Here select new partition table, GUID partition table and OK. And now select free space, click on create. The first partition will be the EFI partition and I want it to occupy 300 megabytes. File system should be FAT32, mount point should be boot EFI and check the boot flag. OK. Now again select free space and create. The second partition should occupy all the rest of the space. Size is OK. File system should be x4. Mount point should be root and check the root flag. And OK. Next. Here you will need to add your user and add a very strong password. Next. Here you get a summary what will be done and install. 
Now everything that is currently on the USB drive will be deleted. So if you have anything important on there, make a backup first. I don't have anything important on there, so I will just continue and install. And let's wait for the installer. This can take some time. Finished, all done, Lubuntu is installed, so we don't need this live environment anymore. We can restart and boot into the full Lubuntu installation on the second USB drive. And that's what I will do as well, and I'll see you there. And finally here we are in Lubuntu, this is now running from the USB drive. And since this is a full installation, we already got the update notifier that some updates are available. So yes, you can also update the system, you can use it as you would normally do. For now I will cancel this. And before we do anything, let's open HTOP. This is HTOP and we are running at 800 megabytes, which is a bit high for Lubuntu, but maybe it's because of the update notifier, I'm not sure. Let's close HTOP. Except for the wallpaper, the overall look is actually better than I remember it from the old Lubuntu versions. And I'm pretty sure it is because they changed the LXQT desktop version to 1.1 which makes this desktop look a lot more polished in my opinion. But I really don't like the wallpaper, so let's change this quickly. Background, browse, let's take this one, open and apply. And OK, I like that one better. Maybe we can also change the theme, appearance, LXQ theme, and let's try this one and apply. Yes, now that's what I'm talking about. This looks polished. Definitely better than the old Lubuntu versions. Let's close that. Now the only additional thing that I want to check is discover the software store. If I would want to install Krita, then I'm also able to change the source. So I can use the Ubuntu Kinetic Universe or the Snap version. And I also see down here which one will be taken. I actually like this feature. I would rather install from the Ubuntu Kinetic Universe than from the Snap store. Not because I don't like snaps in general, I just don't like the initial startup time of snap applications. If they could speed this up, then it would be awesome. But using snaps on a lightweight distribution like Lubuntu is a bit too much in my opinion. Because you usually expect Lubuntu to be fast. But snap packages don't make it faster in my opinion. At least not the initial application load. But after the first start, everything just works smooth. And as I said, if they could fix this aspect as well, then maybe Snaps will get me as a new fan. And that's it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. If you like this video, if you like my content, if you think it's helpful, then please give a like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon to get notified when I release new videos. It means a lot to me, it makes the channel grow. So thank you very much, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.